Hi everyone, this is my uh, second in-person Kansas Fest and I'm having a blast, so thank you very much. Um, so just wanted to introduce the A2C Tangy Pack. I think a lot of you have already seen it before, but here it is. Um, what it is, so it is an interface um, module that plugs into the back of the um, Apple IIc video expansion port. Um, it scan doubles that image and makes it something close to 6x480. Um, and it will send that signal out to a VGA port and an HDMI port. So the HDMI port has an asterisk on it because it's, once again, something close to HDMI. It's actually a DVI signal going on an HDMI port. Um, and it's not even standard signaling, but it's close enough where it will be, you know, most monitor has been able to, you know, sync and lock and display. Um, it pretty much supports all standard 2C resolution, inclu including double high resolution. And, um, you know, it will do eagle, like different modes where it can go from color and mon uh, monochrome. And I try to make the controls as simple as possible so there's no on-screen display or anything. Just push buttons to select and rotate through. Um, so I presented something similar last year. So this is what I had. It was essentially my development board. Um, so lots of different things. And the name comes from the fact that this uses a Tang Nano 9K FPGA module that has the HDMI output. And um, the inspiration for this form factor was that Apple had used to have this RF modulator that used to just slap in the back. So I'm like, oh, that looks really cool. I should try to make it something like that. So that's, that's where this came from. Um, so when I left last year, this, I had a sort of a list of stuff that I wanted to do for the next step. And so the status is, well, yeah, I, I did improve the uh, level shifter uh, situation, so it should be a little more robust, but I did not stress test this because I didn't want to damage anything. So there is a big warning, do not hot swap this thing in and out with the Apple IIc powered on. So I, it's still the case. It should be better, but I don't want to test it. And you know, <laughs> let's see. And then the second thing is, if you remember, this was rather busy with all sorts of different ports. I pretty much pulled out everything I, that was available on that port. Um, I simplified it quite a bit. And essentially, I just have the VGA and the HDMI coming out. Um, I really wanted to keep the VGA. There was a lot of discussion um, between, okay, you know, why do you need a VGA? But then in our community, you know, a lot of people still have VGA monitors, including me. So I left it out. Um, it's definitely the image is a little bit less than HDMI. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, there was a noise problem last time with VGA. I was driving the VGA signal directly from the Tang Nano 3.3 volt, and it's a switched regulator, so it was rather noisy. So I had ended up putting a LDO and a um, um, uh, interface chip basically to improve that. Um, there was a few things I wanted to improve with the color image on it. I didn't really get to that part, so it still might get to that. Um, the other thing was I think there was an option where I can actually plug this into an Apple IIe but I completely abandoned, abandoned that because mainly because there's a lot of different options for slotted Apple II. So I'm like, well, you know, there's other people doing much better job. I, you know, I don't need to do this. So this is mainly for specific for the 2C and the 2C plus. Um, you know, for me, 2C was uh, great because it's just low hassle. It's just easy to set up. So I just wanted to try to make something that was easy to just plug it in and you go. So. Um, but I do want to, I do want to, I do have a few more things uh, in mind about, uh, you know, improving the firmware, but I'm not quite there yet. Um, one of the main thing I want to do too was there's a few different options that you can do. I want to see if I can save that option as a default. That way you don't have to reset to your favorite setting every time you power on, but it's on my to-do list. Let's see how far I get to it. Um, so, yeah, basically, as I said, most of the work has been basically the new form factor. This is what the inside looks like. The case was designed um, to be 3D printed. 
So I've been 3D printing this um, on, in ABS plastic because I didn't want it melting if you left it in a hot car. And um, I did use heat inserts for the screws terminal so that, that I could take it apart and put it back together, which was very useful uh, because I flashed this multiple <laughs> times, as you guys know. <laughs> um, uh, the buttons, there's three buttons. Button A does scan line effect on and off. Uh, button B, um, it's the, so the, the first option is basically the default option when you power on. So button B, it, it will change from color to monochrome green to monochrome amber to monochrome white and then back to color. And then button C is, um, by default, it doesn't have any borders that's shown. But um, as we were testing, even we, we even saw this on some people's, some of the people's monitors. Sometimes the monitor doesn't recognize the fact that it is a video signal because the image is much smaller than the normal 64 by 480. So by pressing that button, it turns on the border that's white, blue, or green, or no button, basically, right? Um, so um, I just set up the GitHub page with help of Chris. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chris. Uh, I'm sorry, Jeremy, sorry. Jeremy. Um, so I'm trying to put all the documentation and information onto the GitHub page. Um, so far, we've tested every 2C and 2C plus has worked okay as long as it wasn't an accelerated 2C plus. So if, if you went into the machine and changed the crystal to run faster, um, it seems to have problems. I don't know what it is yet. I do have a 2C plus at home. I'm trying to see if I can go back home and accelerate it and see what the problem is. So I may be able to support that, but I'm not sure about that yet. Um, I think I, I mentioned a few problem, a few monitors have problems seeing the videos without the mon um, border. So what you would do is turn on the border, let it sync, and then you can turn it off you know, if you don't want it, okay? So, um, so I made a small batch of 10 units uh, before I came here, and I, I actually sold them all um, that was available. <laughs> Thank you. So with lots of encouragement from Chris and Sean and other people, um, you know, because I was sort of like, this is my hobby, I don't want it to turn into a job, but with lots of encouragement from them and others, you know, I'm like, okay, maybe I can make a few more batches. So if you're interested, let me know. I want to put it, so I'm doing it very well style. I'm just putting an Excel spreadsheet with emails and contact information right now. And um, uh, Ken has told me there's much better ways to do it, so I'm trying to set that up, but I'm not there yet. But anyway, for that, uh, you know, let me know. I want to put it in the list. Um, you know, uh, um, the bomb cost for this was around 40 bucks. So I'm willing to sell it to everybody in the Kansas Fest for about 60. And then after that, if there's any other interest, I'd probably double the bomb and go for about 80. That's what I'm, you know, targeting. Um, so if you're going to contact me on Discord, you know, I'm Rob K on the Discord. Um, I do have an Ample to Infinium Slack thing. I should be Rob Kim. And my email's up there as well. Um, and then special thank you to Jeremy, Stefan, and Joey. These are the guys that I met last year. And throughout the years, they've sort of prompted me along to, hey, you guys working, you working on that yet? And, uh, you know, I get distracted easily and get sidetracked on other projects. But um, I definitely appreciate their encouragement to get me to actually finish this before I came to this Kansas Fest. And definitely, I appreciate all the other people have, who has, you know, um, encouraged and, you know, um, cheered me on. Thank you, Chris, um, <laughs> my biggest uh, cheerleader. <laughs> uh, so yeah, um, let's see. So with that, let me just go to a quick. So hopefully this. Oh wait a minute. Yes. Well, so HDMI is hot swappable. It's not, it's the connecting and disconnecting from the Apple that will have problem. And I think, well, 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 I think it's the display. Okay. So once again, without the border, it doesn't recognize the fact that it's a signal. Yep. But with, now that the border is on, I can just turn it off. So, you know, this capture card is having problems too, I think. Someone mentioned that capture card has yep. problem with that. So it might be this. 
So the vertical line, um, that does not exist in any of the monitors I've tested. So I don't know. OK. Anyway, ah, and the other thing I think is also because this is not exactly 64 by 480, the dot pitch rate is slightly different. And I have noticed that some monitors actually have problems as it goes along. It, it phase shifts. So I, I'm, I'm thinking that's what it might be. But um, there was a series of, I think, firmware patches. We were, um, so when I was demoing this in the um, vendor fair, um, Arthur came up and said, hey, what does it look like in text mode? And um, as I was demoing it, I realized text had colors on it. I'm like, wait a minute. It's supposed to be looking at the GR signal and turn off the color. And it wasn't working on that. So when I looked in the code, I realized I turned that uh, uh, feature off when I was debugging something and forgot to turn it on. <laughs> So I fixed that, but then in the process of fixing that, I touched another part of the code that broke the very first line and the very last line so that when it rebooted, when it booted, the A, top of the A disappeared, which was very noticeable. And thank you, TJ, for pointing that out. <laughs> um, so I have another firmware fix. So for about half of you who have this that I haven't patched today, come see me. I can patch it. Um, which, speaking of, I think Oliver last year recommended, I a str strongly recommended I figure out a way to let the user upload the firmware. And um, I, there is a way. And thank you, um, uh, Nicholas, um, for uh, reminding me that there is an open source way of uploading the firmware. So I, I, I want to document all this so that in the GitHub so that you know, if I do release another firmware, you guys can upload it um, yourself. It is a, basically a USB-C connector that you connect up, and you, know, you run that firmware, and it should be able to just upload it directly. OK? And um, so now, uh, where is it? HG, C. OK. C? Oh, caps lock C. OK. So, there is a couple of known bugs. The very last line has, still has color fringe. I don't know if you can see that right there. The very last, last line of the video still has color. I don't know why, so I need to fix that. And then the second thing is every once in a while, especially with the um, HDMI, there will be a, a blue line on the right side that shows up every once in a while. But I I think that's something to do with the HDMI module. It doesn't always happen. But if you power cycle it, it disappears, and it doesn't show up on the VGA. So I think it's something on the Tang Nano's HDMI module, but I can't figure out what that is yet. It might be, that actually might be an artifact of HDR graphics. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Oh, Maybe really? I, I but it doesn't show up on the VGA output. Maybe the VGA is just too crummy to show it. I don't know. Oh, You'd have okay. to check. Yeah. OK, OK. Sure, sure. Yeah, so there are a few things that are known. Um, I am trying to you know, ad address this as much as I can. And um, yeah, like I said, if you're interested in making, uh, uh, you know, getting this module, I am trying to collect a list of people who are interested and try to figure out how many more I need to make. So please let me know. And that's it. Okay. Any questions? Yeah. How, how, much of, how delayed is that? Um, very little. Basically, it is scan doubling. So as as the Apple is scanning each line of video, it's grabbing that, and then within a few lines, it will actually start displaying that. So uh, much less than a, a screen, you know, one screen full, basically. Yeah. So it should have very low latency. Although, you know, Apple. That timing is not, um, yeah. It wasn't very fast. So anyway, so any? Other? Apple, <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you once again. You, um, he's our um, uh, VP of Sales now that I just got hired. Yes, thank you, thank you. <laughs> um, any other questions? 
Okay, great. great. Thank you. Thanks, so if you guys notice, first thing I want to mention is, um, yes, the color is wrong in that uh, video. Um, that's another thing that we figured out. Um, I accidentally inverted the color. That is fixed. So I did a third firmware release when I was at Kansas Fest. Thank you, everybody, who uh, was very patient with me with all these uh, firmware releases. Te I should have tested before I release, I guess. <laughs> um, so the other thing is, yeah, video resolution thing and uh, the compatibility. It seems like most of the VGA port um, monitors uh, are pretty good, but for the HDMI um, devices that are coming from the consumer electronics side, like the TVs and uh, capture cars tend to do worse than um, monitors that are coming from the like the PC side. So LCD monitors or DVI, if you use that, tends to support better. I think it has, to, it, um, I'm, I was trying to do some more research into it. It looks like um, the 64 by 480, that used to be the, the fallback resolution for many of the monitors, sort of got dropped in the consumer side. So I may have to support 720p, I don't know. Um, I think there was a quite a few questions that uh, went by on the chat. So I am gonna try to answer as many as I can. Uh, I know we're short on time. So um, yeah, just keep hitting me with the question and I'll try to answer as many as I can. Awesome, thanks so much, Rob. Okay, thank you guys.